that's me. Hi, I am Andrew Leo Stansberry. It's so good to see you. Um, my heart is racing right now. I am in love with all of you. <laughs> Woo! Hi. So, I am a queer object maker who uses them for performances. I'm this weird gumbo of oddity and love. Right now, I'm building for a future project where I have a thousand flowers and they will be enveloping my body and I have no clue how it's gonna look. And that's the exciting part about building with clay and using it for performance is that nothing will go right. <laughs> so, we're gonna talk about some uncomfortable things. This is my trigger warning bear, so please, if you are triggered by anything, including nudity, profanity, trauma, suicidal ideation, body dysmorphia, romantic comedies, oof, trypophobia, butts, and our hair. And I use the bear because you're gonna see a lot of a naked bear tonight, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't be here. And I don't mean that in the, what is this weird small town Texas boy speaking to so many in kind of that way, kind of there. No, I'm lucky to be alive. When I was seven, a baseball bat flew towards my left temple and opened up my skull. It opened so dramatically that they had to piece me back together, and I was so lucky. My small town ER had a gynecologist to stitch back together my face because otherwise I would be permanently deformed. When I was rushing to the ER, the family had tried to cover and stop the bleeding with Kleenexes, which, what a terrible idea to do. That's not what you use to stop bleeding. It sticks into the wound. So when I imagined when I came to the ER, I had this bouquet of flowers, kind of these bloody Kleenexes of just an arrangement. And I wondered what I looked like to them. And I still wonder what I look like to you. So, we're gonna go bio. Really small town in Cuero, Texas. Where's my Texas peeps? <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> it's a weird town. It's a football town. It's so stereotypical. This is Ruby Begonia, our local mascot. She's riding a horse. She is fierce. I am so proud of her. I in the little one, the cute little gay kid over there. Um, when I was two, my mother became disabled and I have been her caretaker ever since. She suffers from something called reflex sympathetic dystrophy, now known as complex regional pain syndrome. Imagine you were injured once and that feeling of pain never went away. That's not a look of love or happiness, that's a look of sorrow. She suffered so much, and yet she still continued to live for us. Joanna Newsom is a singer, and she sings a lot about Clay for some reason. Um, and there's a line she has in Sawdust and Diamonds and I'm not gonna sing in front of you, I can't do it right now, I'm trying, but um, she says, Sing, I will swallow your sadness and eat your cold clay. Just lift your long face. And that's what I did. Ever since a child, I would be the one that would take her sadness and transform it into something else, like humor or beauty. 
My first mask I have ever made were made with her leftover catheters. They're not used, they're all wrapped, but when she was bedridden, you have to buy in bulk medically, and we had them in a Tupperware, and I didn't know what to do with them. I just knew I had to tell our story, and I was emotional, and I was gagged, and I couldn't get the words out, so I used art as a way to communicate it. When I was struggling to come out at 25 and still couldn't, I was making work about it. I was gesturing towards something where I can just admit to myself that this monster I felt inside was not a monster and this burden we put on young people to stay hidden is ridiculous. Pecans are my least favorite nut because I was the one who had had to go pick them up in the backyard. And there's a certain point that I mixed familial trauma, like my father's own child abuse growing, growing up, with my own. And so I made these ceramic pecans that I would force myself to kneel on, much like the bottle caps he had to kneel on for being a terrible person. I also explored performance in different ways with the photographic artist Libby Rowe. And we were questioning what it was like to be mother and child. What is the sadness a mother has and kind of the responsibility they have to make sure their child is happy always and satisfied and taken care of. Whereas I came to the project as a way to kind of think, was I ever really happy as a child? Did I ever have any friends that came to my party? I don't remember anymore because it's filled with such sorrow. Could I take care of someone else and could someone take care of me and could my tomboy character kind of convey the still sense of wanting of a childhood I never had. And how sometimes when you're bad you must be punished. So in grad school I was trying to still process the implications of self-inflicted homophobia. And the only way I could think about just getting it out there was to purge it and just vomit up these rainbow colors and just a way to get that bile out. The disgust I feel like people, when they look at me, I want them to feel the same. I want you to be repulsed by what I do because you repulse me as well every time you look away. I want to be able to breathe for the first time ever. I want to be able to see in the dark when there is no light. I want to love. I want someone to be there for me. And I want to get rid of all the anguish I have inside out. And I want to know, when you open me up, what will fall out? I want to know, do you think I'm hot? Do you want me? Or am I this monster to you? Am I the scary dream of what you don't want to see? Can I come out of the dark? Can I finally be pretty for you? What do I have to do to show you that I am worth so much more? I 
don't want to be left alone. I don't want to die alone. I want things to envelop me. I use ceramics as a way to hide my identity because every time I see my father's face in the mirror, I just want to gouge my eyes out. In 1738 in San Antonio, a family was dying. They were starving to death due to a locust plague. And they wrote to their local government that they needed help. In consequence of their sins, they begged for sustenance because God had punished them. And I'm here to say that God is not worth just punishment. It is worth so much more and love. So, whew, we did it. Hi. I have a group exercise. My dear friend passed away in August of 2016, Gary Rocket Skull Henderson. And he was the ceramic love of my life. He'd be the person I would have needed to call yesterday when I was having an emotional breakdown. And he would help me. So, what would he do? What would Gary do? Stand up, please. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to hold yourself hard and pretend that you're hugging me. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you.